Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome to Aquarius Rising Africa 2. <laughs> yeah, we are again. Anyway, I am delighted to welcome with me today. Um, Amanda Bays is no stranger to our Aquarius Rising viewers. Um, as those of you who've been watching know, she's our South African um, expert on S SRA, I would say, satanic ritual abuse, but so much more than that as well. Um, but really works a lot with people that have been um, MK altered, DID, um, and so much more, just been in these horrendous situations and does amazing work with survivors and overcomers. So I'm very glad to welcome back with me today, Amanda Bass. And Thank then we you. also have a very brave overcomer with us. Uh, you're not seeing her face or getting her name. Um, we'll call her Al, um, who has an incredible story to tell, um, a South African or shall I say grown up in South Africa, but has been one of these that has had a lot of very high level programming, abuse, SRA, um, perpetuated onto her person, if we can put it that way. Um, Al has, is one of these who's had incredible one of these stories we don't really hear about so much. We hear about being whispered in the backgrounds and is it true, isn't it true, does it happen, doesn't it happen. But I think um, after having met Al, I certainly can validate that these horror of horrors happen. Um, she's one of those that have had her DNA spliced by high level elites, royalty, um, I'll just leave it at that, but also her journey in what that actually meant and means to her and her um, the horrors that she's endured um, having experienced that. So oh, I'm going to hand over to you um, and you can share with us what your story has been and I just want to say I'm very grateful that you've decided to step up and step out because I know it's very scary I can imagine I don't know but I can well imagine that it must be quite a daunting experience coming out of the place that you've held yourself in for so long but very grateful that you've decided to speak with us and um, I know you and Amanda are also affiliated with each other so I think it's wonderful that the three of us can be talking about this um, your life your experience what it's all been Okay, well, Al, I'm going to hand over to you. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Shanti. <laughs> okay, maybe it's best to start right at the beginning. Um, this is not an easy thing to explain because there's so much around it. So maybe I must start right at the beginning and just give a little bit of a background about you mentioned splicing um, to just help um, the viewers understand that it came to be under what's called the project the hitler project in other words like we also just shortly referred to as a, a project so which was started in 1934 Sorry for my sound interruption. Um, 
basically what happens is that they decided to do this program with selected chosen people of um, um it was orchestrated to form i don't know how to, what word to use for it basically people were selected from various bloodlines various bloodlines were selected to create embryos and those embryos um, were selected for a specific purpose internationally and nationally. May I just so ask you, when you say they, who is they that decided on which embryos get selected? I do not know all the players, but the players that were involved in my life and some other people that I know of, and we are all basically um, um, international survivors. Um, the main players has been elite um, royalty. Well, I would rather call and refer to them as hierarchy based people. Um, there's one name that I can mention because he is not alive anymore. Um, Joseph Mengele was one of the main people who orchestrated that. And he was funded by several other people, hierarchy people. Um, so basically, um, that was the main players regarding myself, if, if that helps. Um, there were a lot of other people involved. Um, another person who doesn't live anymore, but I cannot mention his name um, at this point. Um, just for security purposes, um, but it was also a, ro a royal, royal, um, a lot of, a lot of the elites, hierarchy elites, um, with royal bloodlines has been involved and still are involved. So um, it's an ongoing process. So um, yeah, I was passed with several of those bloodlines. And it included also including myself, as far as I know, into the 13 main bloodlines of the world for specific nefarious purposes. So what you're saying is that your DNA is comprised of the 13 main bloodlines of the world, of the, of the, yeah, of the, of the elite bloodlines, shall we say? So you are, that's, you are. A, yeah, that, that you is are what, that is what Yeah, that's what I came to understand um, via just the knowing and um, several knowings um, consequent um, in a consecutive way. It was made known to me over okay. a period of time. So. Um, yeah, but it was done on, it was orchestrated like that on purpose. And um, what made it easier is because one of the main donors um, was already templated with all those slices. So they used that and then just added on with me to just broaden the spectrum. I'm just it's trying to explain, I'm just trying to explain this so that it could maybe, I know for me, this took me a little while to actually cotton on to what that actually meant. So maybe just for, for, for our viewers as well. So what you are saying is that they take DNA from all 13 bloodlines, various donors within the 13 bloodlines, male and female and they splice this together and from that they create an embryo is that what you're saying and yeah. then yeah. so would this be something like we're reading about that are then created in the false womb so are you saying then basically you were created in a petri dish and then grown in a false womb is that what you're saying in in a nutshell um some some of it yes but I must first add, before I answer your Petri dish question, is that the template for the 13 bloodlines already existed. It was okay. already done. 
that they didn't have to start from scratch with me. Okay. They just added on to that, used that existing template and added on. So okay. all I, I mean, so 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 basically, as far as we know, you are part of um, the British Royals, the 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 the, the Netherlanders, the Hollanders, all all of the royal families that exist. You are part of them plus more. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then to explain the second part of your question. Um, they did do the Petri dish um, protocol. That is part of a protocol that are done, and it's done in a certain country. It's usually always done in Israel. And um, why Israel? What's so important about Israel? Um, it's a it's a big portal. It's very significant in the spiritual realm, and it's a big portal for for. Um, this is the, the hard one to explain. <laughs> it's a big portal for um, for AI and for second heaven entities and underworld and all, all the different elements of the, of the planet, um, water, earth, fire, um, all of that. Um, big portal. It all comes together there in Israel, and then it's all interconnected to other continents. And um, it's like a construct. Um, so they needed that dodginess to do this. So that was the right type of frequency of dodginess to do this. They've got dodginess yeah. all over. And I know I understand there's portals all over. But for these particular experiments and stuff, Israel is the place that they do this. It is because of the specific iniquity forces that are okay. all put together and it is also it forms part of like the world wide web which interconnects all um survivors um and which satan has been trying to establish and has what he established but as um survivors heal every time the the link the web gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker that's why it's so important for us to get free and to break that down and it's because of that huge iniquity force that's all together there and all the survivors humanity and essence are the decades that's been collected and spread i want to just ask amanda if you don't mind chiming in here i mean how often do you as as an expert working with sra survivors and overcoming overcomers actually deal with someone um like l has been, I hate saying the word spliced because it really does make it sound like a petri dish experiment, experiment. but mm. what I do see is a beautiful, mm. sentient, amazing woman in front of me. So I've got to think very carefully about the words I use because that's not the end result of these um, disgusting, um, horrible, I don't even know what to call it, honestly. But anyway, so yeah. Yeah. Amanda, what do you what do you I mean, how do you deal with this? I mean, this can't be the first case like this you're hearing about, right? No, no, no. All the royals that I work with and um, it's it's been pretty interesting because, um, you know, you don't look for your clients, your clients look for you. And those that have come to me, it's like God handpicks them. And, and everyone, um, there hasn't been one that has not been uh, one of these uh, 13 or 11 or whatever bloodlines um, that, come, that tells the same story, that it gets repeated different countries, um, different ages, <clears throat> uh, male, female, um, telling the same sort of stories, you know? So no, it, it, it happens a lot. Um, you do get the lower, you know, again, you don't want to be derogative, but you do get lower ranking uh, families that are not part of the 13 bloodlines. Um, and to prove that you are part of the 13 bloodlines, um, you have to prove that you come from the bloodline of Charlemagne. <clears throat> 
And um, I mean, that's way back. So that started in the eighth century. And by the 12th century, everything was, was settled. And the very first Holocaust in the world that ever happened, happened in the 12th century. And so um, <clears throat> Charlemagne is, was this king. And if you say you're a royal today and you are part of the top bloodlines, you have to be able to prove that you come uh, from, from King Charlemagne. From the 12th century onwards, your bloodline, that, that's your proof. And so, um, you know, when you and I, are, we still got some sessions to go as we unpacking this whole thing globally. Um, I'm going to be touching on that and I'll be showing you slides and we'll be going through the years and exactly what they did. Um, but also just to get back to Israel, um, everything, everything about SRA, DID, mind control, uh, programming, um, in, uh, engineering people, um, <clears throat> which is basically what they do, is they engineer and they decide who's the sperm, who's the ovum, who gets spliced in, and what this child would eventually become. So there's like a blueprint plan, and, and this comes from Satan himself. So it's the humans are basically just um, carrying out the plan, but the commands come from Satan himself. Now, if, if we know the Bible, we know that uh, since the beginning of time, Satan has tried to overthrow God. That's been his plan. That's why he came to Adam and Eve. Um, he tried to bring deception from the garden and um, just threw the whole apple cart over. So from the beginning of time, Satan has tried to um, overthrow God, to uh, beat him at his game, uh, to raise up an army, to overthrow him from his throne and take over. That's just been his whole, his whole aim in life. That's what it's been. But he also knows what the Bible says. He knows that he has a time. He has a timeline. He has a beginning and he has an end. Because he's a created being, he's yeah. not. Um, he's he's not God. He'll never yeah. be God. And yeah. so, him and a third of his angels that he could uh, conv convince, they were kicked out of heaven when they tried to rebel and take over God's throne. This was even before mankind was around. They, he tried to do that. So this has been an obsession with him. It's he's got such a hatred for God. Um, that he's tried his utmost to kick him off the throne and to get rid of him. And so God chooses Israel as his city and the place where he will put, when he comes back, where he will put his foot will be in Jerusalem. And Satan knows that. He knows what's written in the Bible. He, he knows the Bible better than what we do. And, and actually, it's, I've had interesting deliverances where Sometimes the entities try and tell me, you know, when, when we were we were like under pressure and we were looking for the scriptures on baptism, and suddenly this voice pipes out, out of this person who we counseling and saying, "Oh, come on, it's in John whatever and Romans this and you know and and just giving us the scriptures." So the devil knows the word better than what we do, and so his whole. His whole aim has been, I have to kick God off his throne and beat him at his own plan. And he's tried to do it all these years. So God has given him a certain time period. He's got a beginning and an end, and he knows the end. He knows what the Bible says about his end. He's going to end up in the lake of fire. And the and the. The, the spirit of the Antichrist and the beast and the false prophet, which is in Revelation, all speaks about him in, in ending and they will all end in the lake of fire. And so there are people saying, but the Antichrist is a human. Now, that's it's not what I read in the Bible, because the Bible tells me that the Antichrist will not stand in front of the judgment seat of God. Every human being 
will be judged for what we've done. And we will all stand in front of the judgment seat of God. But when it comes to the Antichrist, the beast, the false prophet, the dragon, when it comes to that, Revelation says there's no judgment for them. They've already judged. They're going to go straight into the lake of fire. So the Antichrist cannot be human. There will be humans that act in the spirit of the Antichrist. For example, Hitler and Mussolini. These guys were acting in the spirit of the Antichrist. And so um, they're human. They will be judged. But they open themselves up for the spirit of the Antichrist. And so you find that everything turns around Jerusalem. Everything is around Jerusalem. Why? Because it's God's city. It's where God has written his name. And it's the place where he's coming back to. It's the place where Jesus was crucified. Everything is about Jerusalem. And so if Satan wants to try and counterfeit copycat and kick God off his throne, that's where he's going to go. So he used to have his main throne was in Berlin, uh, sorry, in, in, in Pergamum. The Bible tells us where Satan has his seat in Pergamum. Then Hitler went, interesting, Hitler went and fetched that exact altar and that throne and took it to Berlin, to Germany, because that's when Hitler was in charge of the world. He was marching to take the world. And so um, he sent um, many, many um, monks and they did ex excavations all over the place and tried to, you know, climb mountains and connect with entities and do a lot of rituals. But, um, you know, every time, you know, God beats him at it because, I mean, Psalm 2 says God sits in the heavens and he laughs. He laughs at the devil because he's trying so hard to win, but he's never going to win. And the, prop, the sad thing is he can only win those who he's deceived. And what has happened is he's deceived these, these 13 bloodlines, the royals. They're all part of his kingdom. And they've all built their own reptilian race and all the rest. So um, they are deceived, highly deceived, and they think they're going to win. So um, the problem is the survivors, like Al. They were the parts of her her back parts that were cult aligned, that believed they're going to win. They believed Satan, but they found out, you know. And and the, what we do is we tell them you've been lied to, you've been tricked. You're not going to win. The devil's lost. I mean, it's it's written. It's written. <coughs> Sorry. What I'd like to ask so, you, Al, um, just from that perspective. So now that we've understood kind of like where that comes from, can you explain to us how it was for you through that period? Do you remember anything? I mean, it's a weird question to ask because no one really would remember that part of their existence. But I'm wondering if because of everything you've been through and um, yeah, over to you from the beginning, as I said, how was that for you? How did you experience being that? Okay, you mean you want me to start from the birthing process? Well, yes, if, you, if you're comfortable doing that. I'm just interested, you know, because I know that what you've experienced yourself would be so different to like the normal conception of a baby between man and woman type thing, you know. Um, yes. But through what you've really experienced with all these um, splicings and stuff going on, is there anything different you may recall? What do you recall? How was that uh, from the beginning for you? Okay, my beginning might sound a bit strange for, for the viewers because I can remember as far back as still being an embryo. 
but it's because of the knowing that you call the Nishama knowing that Amanda is teaching on. Um, I don't think there's another way for survivors to recall those things. Because of what they've done is with, um, as I explained with the slicing, um, as per protocol um, within the project, they normally do um, freeze you. The embryo gets frozen. And that embryo can, it's not like that with all survivors, but normally within the project, the um, embryo gets exposed to rituals already. So you can be already traumatized within that embryo state. And I know this will sound very crazy relating this, but I have memories as well relating back to the Holocaust. Holocaust because um, in that frozen state of attackiness, so in the spiritual realm, to bring down iniquity force upon my bloodline, they subject you to certain things to bring it down upon you, download from the supernatural realm, the iniquity forces upon you already and to start splitting you already in the embryo. So that's the furthest back I remember. So you um, haven't even been put in a womb yet. No. Right. No. And you're still in your embryonic state. And I just, this to me is crazy that they can do this. So I want to just get this through to our viewers as well, that this is how macabre this type of Stephen King stuff that Stephen King makes it look like a fairy tale. So you saying that in your embryonic embryonic state, you were taken to rituals, already started having the DID, which is the dissociative identity disorder. In other words, the splits coming from there. How how did they do this while you were still in embryo? Well, I had to research to understand for myself. So I do not have all the answers yet. What I do know for a fact is that I were taken to different embryo um, to different rituals, to different places, and what they do, how they do that is they can spiritually transport you and physically that embryo can be implanted, even though in a frozen state, into a person's body. And that person goes to a ritual. Where in the body? And is this a woman that it's implanted into? It can be male or female, it can be Nephilim, it can be whatever they choose. Where do they implant it that? if it's a male? If it's a yeah. male, where do they implant it? I mean, I'm thinking, okay, if it's a woman, I can imagine they put it in the womb of the woman. But if it's a man, where do they implant this embryo? And obviously it's, it's a temporary normally state. Abdominal, normally abdominal area. You must just this remember that in, that, that in Hitler's time during the World War II, they were already much more advanced than what the world knew of. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. I have no doubt about that. These guys have had technologies. And that's why I think the average person on the street can't even begin to imagine that 5G can harm us in our current circumstances. To the average person, that is too far-fetched. And then we sound like we're talking from cloud cuckoo land when we just talk about that, let alone stuff like this. And that's what I'm saying, you know. I would really like to make it as clear and concise for our viewers as possible to understand what these freaks have been doing for such a long time. So, they literally take you in your embryonic form and they then, spiritually, they can implant you into a male or a female body like a womb or a part of the abdomen do you grow there i mean do they put you there for any amount of time or what do you do in there why are they putting you in there is that because they just want you to take on part of that character part of that energy part of that frequency um part of those characteristics i can imagine that that's but why do they do that? Um, the, the first purpose of that is 
okay, maybe I can answer in two ways. Um, one of the purposes is to download an equity force from that particular person. They don't just put you into a random person's womb. Like some an an equity force. Like an epic commander and say, okay, we're putting her in a yeah, so specific, form. specific, they'll put you in a specific person for a specific the, reason. Yeah, according that to the bloodline and, and according to your calling, um, your ranking. Explain to me iniquity force just so that we get that clear would that be the level of evil or the level of energy i don't even know what to call it i would just imagine the type of energy vibration that that particular person is carrying so for me it has to be a particular level of evil that they are carrying so that they can literally pass that on to you while you are still in your em embryonic state. Is, is that sounding right? Yes, just think of, think of a mother carrying a fetus within a womb. So whatever that mother is going through during a pregnancy, the mother is maybe stressed out or it's, a, it's, it's the mother's first child. So she goes through anxiety and maybe have issues of abandonment or rejection um, with the first child and when that child gets born that child has issues with identity security and all those kind of things that gets carried over well the same principle um, counts in this in this context but it's the it's like it's only the, the purpose of of um the occult um doing it is to download the worst of the worst to to survivors and they they load you with so much that you basically um, end up being born and not having a clue who you are even though you're being a baby you just you're born without an identity you're thinking you're a it basically so, but what um, you were saying to me was that uh, this is this project has been going on since I think you said 1934. So well, they established a splicing that year. If um, your yeah, um, it might I, I'm not aware that it's been um, started before. I speak under correction. So 44. 44. 40, oh, as well, 1944. Sorry, not 44. 1944. Okay. So. Um, yeah. So you definitely don't look like you were born in 1944. So, <laughs> so is it possible that you were spliced already or did this happen later on? That they still had a whole lot of little DNAs and whatever from a whole lot of royals and then they put them together. How does this work? Do they splice them? And do they keep them frozen for however long they want to? And then they decide when they want you born. They then start putting you in wombs and in stuff like that. So how long can they freeze you for? Um, I'm not sure of the exact science now. Um, it used to be 20 to 30 years, but because of the science of the beings were advanced, um, that I'm not sure of the exact amount of years now for how long you can be frozen, but I will be I will kept frozen for a couple of decades, and my birth were planned that I were born by a surrogate by a body, a surrogate woman, on an occultic high day. Did that happen? Were you born on, on the day that they planned you, uh, the high day yeah. and... They, they, they do that on purpose, they orchestrate it um, as well. With, well, with most of the survivors that I'm aware of. So you were then placed in different wombs, different abdomens, men, women, false wombs, I'm assuming all human. No, it wasn't all human, no. But you were placed in an animal womb as well? Um, a Nephilim womb. Wow. Yes. 
why again is it for the for the iniquities to be downloaded so this was so by the time that you that that you were born you were like jam-packed with a whole lot of bloodline a whole lot of I would imagine spiritual gifts as well that they wanted you to have because I would imagine in this time they also putting in a whole lot of spiritual stuff from whoever and just having a merry day concocting this concoction. Yes, um, but you're asking about the Nephilim womb. It is because um, what Amanda once spoke of um, about that third DNA strand. Um, one of the reasons I do it is not just for the um, iniquity force, but also um, it creates trauma bonds. And also then the other thing is that it enables the person to um, to birth from any age um, Nephilim children. They're not really human. They're not human, but you do get hybrids. But um, that is why also with the Nephilim, um, that is what they do. The purpose is to to not stop the bloodline. It has to continue. So it's like like Amanda said, um, Satan copies everything. So he copy Satan cannot create by himself. So he copies God and try to with the fallen angels to co-create with human beings. So. Um, so that is why women are able to um, produce Nephilim um, babies. Well, I don't know if that answers a pro properly. It does. I'm just amazed. It's. <laughs> it does. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. I'm just like, what the hell? What next do these people think of? There is nothing they actually haven't thought of, right? I mean, and we know now, I always say as well, you know, only God can create. But but the Lucys, as I like to call them, definitely know how to take every strand of God's frequency that God has created and turn it upside down, inside out, and can really concoct something very nasty in its inverted form, that's for sure. Okay, okay, so now... Um, you then go through this period of for 20, 30 odd years being, being spliced and frozen and, and placed in wombs and taken out and experimented on just to see how much they can put inside of you. And I still would like to know, we'll get there though, why they needed to put all of the stuff inside of you. Okay. So let's come the day that they now finally uh, finally decide that they actually want to birth you so now do you go into one womb for nine months and you had a surrogate so how did that work um i had the experience of being placed in more than one womb um and firstly um it was a combination of I were placed in Satan's womb as well. I know this is really not cool to say. Um, not a nice thing to also be dealing with that. But um, firstly that. Um, and then also I were placed in two other wombs, female wombs. And the woman that birthed me um, was the longest. And I were birthed um, in South Africa. Um, through the surrogate mother, who was also, they were also for purposes of bloodline, um, spliced in, um, but they were not the main splice in my DNA, but they were for a purpose also, because they were all um, of a significant, significant bloodline um, that interconnects with the hierarchy bloodlines. Okay, so they were also chosen specifically. Okay, they were so chosen let's, specifically, yes. So let's go to the day you were born. You were um, born? Oh, unfortunately, I cannot give my date of birth through. Sure. I can, I can only, I can just tell you that um, from the day that I was frozen, 
and splice until the day we're born with um, three decades. And when I were born, um, they did they did a, a I were born. As far as I know, my my surrogate mother wouldn't disclose that information on the manner I was born. But um, I was born naturally, as far as I know, a little bit early. And then I was flown to Israel for a mock birthing ceremony on Mount Hermon. How old were you when you flew to Israel? It was uh, I was newborn, so. So you like literally a couple of hours or days? Well, no, it was directly after birth. And you must also remember they use high technology, so you don't need to go in your usual planes. I don't want to go in too much detail with this, otherwise it might overwhelm viewers a little bit <laughs> um, with all the AI technology. But um, I was immediately taken from the hospital where I was born at to Israel. And it was a very short period of time to get there. And we're not and now talking we're... about an airplane leaving from Jan Smuts Airport in Johannesburg. No, no. And I would place into a into a, um, a man-made, well, artificial made um, womb, and placed into a body and rebirth to a mock birthing process that was the purpose of that is to birth one into death and to wrap your first your first rebirthing session of into death into satan's kingdom and directly after birth one of the protocols is to be wrapped three way which they did with me directly after birth um, so Can't even imagine that horror. Wow. So you've had this literally for 30 years before you were born. You've been literally traumatized, flying around from one womb to the other, being spliced from one place to the other. Eventually, when after 30 years you're finally born in your human form, you get zapped off in a nanosecond to Israel where you are now rebirthed into some mock birth and you are now raped three ways. Do we know by who? It must have been yes. royal, royal people. I, mean, if I, have, you. I have clear ah. memories of that. So um, you remember, you remember the rape? I do remember that, yes. The majority of it, yes. Um, I don't want you to get too graphic because I'm just, again, I'm also trying to understand and trying to get the, our audience to understand as much as what they can as well. From a newborn's perspective, and I understand why you have memory of this from the, from the Neshama, absolutely, I completely understand that. But from the newborn's perspective, can you help us understand what you remember of that time? Can you tell um, us who was involved? I'm sure probably yes. not, but if you can. I can tell you some of who were involved. Um, from the from the, the mock birthing, I remember as, as a person looking in on it. Um, I suppose that was as like, a super, like an out of body experience. Almost like that, looking in on myself being birthed from this. It was a white sack which they use like a amniotic sac, but they use like a white translucent sac. Um, that experience I remember like that. I looked in on it, I saw it like that. I didn't feel that. But then when they did the rape, I remember that. Um, because I started having body memories before I had the cognitive memories. Um, so, I remember the people who, who did that, um, they each do three way, right? Um, so just putting disclaimer of graphic information for the viewers, um, that 
free way rap involves, I don't know if it's okay to say this, but um, it will help other survivors maybe for validation, um, vaginal, um, um, anal and oral. Um, sodomizing also can include oral when you're so tiny. Um, and that's how they wrap you in death is because no human has been made to tolerate that blood from what God created us in a normal marital relationship. So um, Satan mocks and defiles everything God created for his purposes. So they use that and basically what happens is you as a baby basically choke to death and they revive you afterwards. So in that process, because of the acts that they do to you, they create those soul ties and the trauma bonds. So it establishes those liquidity forces. And um, three of the people that I do remember is Satan in his human form. Um, and the one is the other one is Nimrod, which is an which is a Nephilim. He is one of the third created Nimrods produced by a human um, woman and um, other one is a person um, is a, a royal which I can't name I can name but I can't name on here um, his family members are still alive so um, these, those are the three main male people I remember there was a woman present as well which I know who she is but I I'm not, I can't name her just for her own security purposes uh, as well. Um, and then another person um, that was present, but I do not remember him being involved, was Joseph Mengele. Mengele. Was, was he your, one of your main handlers? Um, I had many main handlers, so it's, and it's difficult to single one particular one out. But yes, he was. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I can definitely see our interview is going to go more than than one interview. So I'm not going to rush anything at this point in time. So if you don't mind, just I'm going to take this slow. So let's then talk about. If that was your introduction to life on planet Earth, can you talk us through, let's say, the first five years of your life um, between then and five years, round about there? Um, clearly, you were you you were here to go through a lot of abuse and to go through. You know, they already started putting you through a lot of torture was was one of the reasons for that to see how tough you were to see how much you could survive what was the reason that they put all of this negative stuff on you and yet yeah you are uh, alive you're beautiful you're intelligent you you you're holding down a great career um it's it's incredible to me to hear your story and to actually observe that you are still here, normal, sane, loving, compassionate, caring, um, after all of this stuff has been subjected upon you at a time that you are beyond helpless. I mean, you're not even, you don't even have a finger to lift at that stage. So I'd love to hear your take on that. Okay, I just need you to repeat the first part of your question for me again, because um, I ask about um, how do one feel? Yeah, so more, you know, I understand that, like, if that was your introduction to world on, you know, in, in, uh, into life on this planet, I don't even want to think what possibly the next five years could have been. And what I was also just saying was that I think there's, They've obviously groomed you to be able to take so much pain and suffering. And I mean, you must have incredibly high 
pain thresholds, I would imagine, and just tolerance th thresholds. I'm just interested to know from your perspective, let's just talk about the first five years because we definitely don't have enough time to go beyond that, But and I would obviously want to do this follow-up with you. But um, just from what you can explain to us from that, the, just after after that, what do you recall and what do you remember yeah. and why did they do that to you? Why did they bring you into the world? What was their purpose and their reason? Okay, um, I think maybe to answer the first part of your question is that how do one, how do they choose? It's because of it's because of the generational, whether there's generational bloodlines, it's normally intergenerational, so they speak specifically who they take. And there's certain protocols following that being subjected to the project. So they quickly can see whether you can survive or not. The ones who, it also depends, they check whether you've got a dissociative ability. And, um, I've been told I'm intelligent, but very often I do not feel very intelligent. I, and I also don't feel very normal. It's just my reality. But I've been told I'm quite intelligent. <laughs> but sometimes when you work through this and go through this journey, you don't always feel very intelligent. You feel actually very stupid and dumb. Yeah, well, I can tell you, you are very intelligent. I've dealt with <laughs> you for a while now. And it's, I can tell you that you're one super smart lady, that's for sure. But basically, it's just um, so they they um, they choose on uh, they pick you on those kind of categories. It's like if you're able to have a high dissociative level ability, and also your bloodline plays a huge role. And then, um, and if the the people who are not strong enough, they die. They already die as babies. They die very early on, because I mean. Um, so um, that's all the checkpoints that they, they use. Um, you get put through torture as, as you've heard since very early on. And if, you, if you're not, if you don't make it, then you are being discarded literally. Um, so um, yeah, that's my experience. So that's what I know. Um, but that's just from my, from my paradigm. And, um, well, if I go into the calling, I think that will take up the whole session. <laughs> um, so maybe I must just give you some idea about what happened after this, that I were yeah. placed, obviously before birth, um, I were placed into a South African family, surrogate family. And then again, after birth, one of the first rituals that took place was at a very um, significant military base that has got a copycat in Germany, exact copy. Um, military um, base here in South Africa? Yes, yes, in one of our main capitals. And um, so again, it was um, because of the iniquity force in the particular province, particular um, city. So right after birth, um, there was another initiation ritual done there, um, where other family members and cult members were used to also do another rape um, ritual. So it continued on from there. So they, that was my front life. Um, that was the that was part of the front life being placed in the family who was a Christian family, supposed Christian family, very religious. Cover life, yeah, your cover life. So that was basically what I refer to as the front front life. Um, yes. So, uh, With a Christian uh, family uh, and a and no doubt a probably a father who was a duomani or fadung. And a mother who was um, the perfect uh, wife for the Duomini, right? Kind of, yes. <laughs> um, yes, grandfather was, um, yes. They both were very prominent. They, the, the male figures were very prominent figures. Female 
female on both paternal and maternal sides were very prominent figures nationally and internationally, so I can't mention their names. Um, so, um, yes, and that was the front life. From there on, it was basically um, abuse, um, abuse outside of the SRA, grooming and rituals um, that entailed being taken to many different countries being exposed to many different high up officials, elite, royal, um, a pope that is, um, who does, is not alive anymore. Um, so I can mention about him. And, um, and on the front life, um, it was a lot of sexual abuse, physical abuse, starvation. Um, the cult planned it very, very well. Um, they made sure I've been surrounded in every area of my life with cult people who observed my every daily life movement, whether it be school, wherever I've been. Um, it's been very well orchestrated as such. Um, so uh, yeah, I can give more details, but I think to just wrap it up a bit like that for now, to give an idea, um, the abuse continued, but luckily I didn't know. I think it was a saving grace to not remember for those years, not active, not consciously remembering. I don't think I would have survived otherwise. Yeah, I think maybe that DID sometimes is a is a is a blessing in disguise, right? Because I would imagine you have so many splits. I would imagine that in this situation, you would have had a lot of splits um, and different parts that you would have relied upon at different times, um, all in the name of survival. Wow. I must I must add to that, Shanti, that I um. I've never been aware of it. Um, for up to about 20 years, I had no idea that I were abused. I had no memory of my childhood. So um, it was quite a shock when I did, when it did start coming out and leaking out the information. So today I can say I'm grateful for the dissociation, but when it started coming out, I was so not grateful. I was very angry and pitch denial and all of that. I'm very grateful that you think such as dissociation is a place yeah. for it in me. Um, for sure. When I passed it, so you know, <laughs> I do have because of the people I've been exposed to. Uh, sadly, very many parts I've been having to deal with them still. So. Yeah, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what what it would have been like if you didn't have that disassociation that's for sure I think just the trauma is enough to to kill anyone or to send you into Grundakis for the rest of your days that's for sure but um, yeah I want to just say thank you for that uh, but before Amanda is there anything you would like to just add in maybe chime in there um, on what Ella has been saying yeah it's horrifying I mean you deal with yeah, this regularly yeah. as well yeah, yeah. Um, I think, Chantal, what is also important for the viewers just to keep in mind around the, um, the, the embryo that gets planted into different, you know, male or female um, cavities. Uh, I mean, a male doesn't have a womb, so it's a cavity. Um, is to know that once they have... Um, the conception has taken place then they place the, the the embryo that little that little bundle of cells that's now a baby that they place into a blue ball and that's how the survivors describe it um they they only see it as a blue ball so it's 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 a little blue ball that um supplies them protection and food 
and everything they need. And that blue ball comes from Satan. That's something that's been devised um, by Satan and empowered by him. And so it, they're not just in their raw state because, you know, um, we just think in your mind, how do you place an embryo into, into someone's cavity and they're still going to live? But they get put into a little blue ball and in that frozen state. And that keeps them alive. And so they almost get told, you owe me your life. I put you in this blue ball. It's my, I kept you alive. I fed you. I cared for you. So in that state, you, you now owe me. You see, that's the game Satan plays. And so um, that's important to know that you're not just as, as a little embryo pushed into a cavity. And of, of course yeah. you won't make it. So it's, there's got to be some sort of a little Capsule. wound. Yeah. Yeah. Cap that you are put in into. So that's a big one. And then um, the, the other thing that's also very important is that they will determine what you will become one day. So they will determine whether you'll be an engineer, a doctor, a, uh, um, you know, whatever your, your career is, because you're intelligent, because they've got your whole blueprint plan of your life is unfolding and and the people around you the humans have to play it exactly according to the plan you can't deviate one bit we had a young lady who was a student and she was studying uh, to be an engineer and um in in her studies um we started working with her and she suddenly realized um i don't want to be an engineer that's not who God made me to be. I don't want to be an engineer. So the next day she goes and she tries to change her subject and tries to, to, to just, you know, redirect and go into what she feels she wants to. And that night, uh, the family members who are her handlers got hold of her and punished her big time, took her to a swimming pool, did drowning rituals, she came back to us the next day, blue, absolutely so raped and um, uh, death rituals and, and beaten up. And they said to her, come what may, you will be an engineer. You will finish your studies. And, and they got put the fear of Satan in her so much that she stopped thinking of going into any other direction. So they know what they want you to be. So you could even be trained as a, as a therapist. And this is what's been going on. They actually train you as a therapist so that you can block the, the people trying to find help. So what happens is they create a therapist part. And you will sit there as a therapist and then this client comes in who's actually a survivor trying to get out. And this therapist would switch and she will become a perpetrator. She will become a programmer. And then she just reprograms you right back. And all the work, memories, what they call bleeding of memories, flooding stuff coming forward. They just put it right under and it's gone again. And so they, they know exactly what they want you to be. So they can make you a doctor because as a doctor, you're going to have to program others because yeah, this is scientific. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Very scientific. So, so they have their teeth more on. in the teeth. So they, they've already, over the years, they've already put people in place to infiltrate <laughs> everywhere. That's it's not just in That's the upper right. echelon. Wow. This is a generation. I mean, they are all, if you're talking bloodline and you're talking royal, they will only be sent to royal doctors. They'll only be sent to the royals, those that are trained at, at that level. 
So they won't yeah. send a lower worker bee who's just um, making babies for them to kill. They won't send them to a royal doctor. No. You see, sure. so, so it's the ranking, very, very yeah. important, the ranking. Wow. So, but they will just, they would decide what your future will be so that in that position, you will kill. In that, because now you become a perpetrator. You see, as yeah. a child, you're a victim. But the minute you pass 12 you're not and 13, all. and you go in the five eye walls of Satan, which is protocol, you will then become the perpetrator. Yeah. And then you start full on killing, programming, and doing raping, doing everything that they told you to do. And you have no choice. You have yeah. no choice. It's protocol because they've got to keep the generational curse going the whole time. So this has been programmed in a lot of these people, a lot of these killers, a lot of these murderers, a lot of these serial killers are That's actually, right. they've been programmed yeah. by these guys to actually yeah. do the things they do. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a, a guy that they, they murdered, a guy mur they murdered last year, him and his wife were murdered, but he started writing books and exposing the sleepers. And um, he, he's uh, excellent, um, Russ Dizdar. And he's called his book, The Black Awakening. And he speaks about these super soldiers and how they are trained. And they, <coughs> they go, to, they put them asleep and, and they put a time clock on them and a trigger. And then there would be a release. And they'll remember the shooters, the different shooters that shot the children at the schools. Yeah. Um, in the yeah. movies, this one guy pulled, you know, pulled a gun and he started shooting. That yeah. those guys are, are sleepers. They've been they yeah. super soldiers and they were sleepers and they were triggered awake and they had to do their assignment. Yeah, absolutely. So um it's all planned. It's all planned, but they they are obviously more the workers. They are more the soldiers, the fighters, the warriors. Yeah. Um, then your royal. Your royal will be, will be very hidden, very hidden, very secret. They, yeah. they're not, you don't really recognize them. And the other thing is the old way. They would, sh they would um, switch very clearly. You could see different handwritings. You could hear change in voice when another part comes forward. There would be definite signs of how you can discern has somebody switched. But they have perfected it so well that they, they don't switch anymore. They they do what you call shift. So it's just it's it's just a shift. It's just a yeah, shift. Yeah, that's it's slight. Slow. There's no more yeah. slight. Yeah. Like there's no change, there's no handwriting, there's no loss of time. You know all the old symptoms. They perfected yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Gosh. Well, I want to say thank you so so much, both Amanda and Al, for joining me here today. Um, I look forward to we can do next week same time. I hope both of you ladies will be available then. We can talk about that all fair just to do a follow-up because I think we're definitely going to need, need at least one or two more where we can follow up and just um, get a, a, a deeper idea of what happens, call it an upper echelon, because I have no doubt, Al, you are not the only um, spliced embryo on this planet. I think there are so many. I would imagine that there are thousands and thousands of royal babies running around um, in, that have had this sort of thing occur um, with them. So knowledge is power. It's good for us to know what is going on and for us to understand, you know, that there are so many um, people walking around, living right next door to us working in the desk next door that might have 
a tale of horror, honestly, that we are so oblivious of, and maybe even they themselves are oblivious of. But I think it's so important for us to know that this is happening, this has been occurring, and for it to stop, we actually need to be cognitive of it, be aware of it, and actually take notice of it. So, I look forward to having you two ladies back very soon. Thank you so much for joining me here on Aquarius Rising Africa. I really, really appreciate you. So, I want to say to our viewers, there you have it. Some more stuff just being unraveled and revealed. It's insane, actually. But I want to thank you so much for watching us again today. Uh, take good care of yourselves and if you haven't already find us on Facebook but shoot Twitter telegram and Odyssey and I really want to encourage you please to go and because you know that our other channel was just taken down but the Odyssey channel um, is pretty much protected so please go and subscribe to the back channels because all of our old videos and recordings and things are still on there we've now been down for I think less than a week or something and we're building up again um, and thank you for your support really appreciate that so thank you everyone God bless you all take good care of yourselves and I shall see you back very very soon